and Northwestern getting ready to go. It's gonna be a key one like Nora talked about as Michigan State will start off with this one. Lots of implications. Women's soccer will play later as well in the Big Ten tournament. But it's gonna be a fun one here to Michael. So we get ready. It's gonna go over to Jack Beck. So headed up in the air. Starting lines for both squads, Owen Finnerty, Jack Beck, Elijah Howe, Jack Zugage, Jonathan Stout, Nick Stone, Josh Adam, Tyler Crawford, Jake Spadafora, Will Perkins, Luis Sala, all starting for Michigan State for Northwestern. You got Christian Garner, Brandon Cloggett, Callum McCammy, Ethan Dudley, Logan Weaver, Ron Brown, Joseph Arena, Nigel Prince, Javen Van Deventer, and Jason Gajahara. As Michigan State trying to push it the other way, Jonathan Stout, one of the leading scorers of this Michigan State team, going to cross it in. It's deflected nicely away there on defense by Nigel Prince. Big opportunity there for the Spartans early, able to get the offense going. It's something that they've seen success so far this season when they can generate offense early and score first. They're very good. Get a look at the goalkeeper, Christian Garner for this squad. As that one crossed in out front and this one headed away. Running into the net hard, tangled up was a Spartan there. Appeared to be Elijah Howe. As Beck's gonna deflect this one off of Gajahar. Michigan State trying to get some early momentum in this one. Like Michael talked about in the open, Northwestern was able to take the matchup last year against Michigan State, and that was a big one for the Wildcats. Yeah, dropped Michigan State to eighth there for the Big Ten tournament, the eighth seed. They were a first round exit a year ago. Here's a good opportunity for Northwestern McCammy, and that one's stolen away. Will Perkins now with it for Michigan State, redshirt senior. Just gonna go near side to Nick Stone. Spadafora and the Spartan team. And Spadafora goes down. Slow to get up, rolling around. That's not what you want to see if you're Michigan State. Spadafora, one of the freshmen on this team that have been so good so far this season. Looks like he's okay, though. Yeah, 5'11", 170. You get a look at Christian Garner, 54 saves, .692 save percentage. Solid goalkeeper for Northwestern. He's got a big role to play today. One's headed down by the Wildcats, just trying to get it out of Michigan State's attacking third. This one deflected away. Wildcats ball, and that will lead to a throw in there for Logan Weaver. Michigan State doing a good job applying pressure early, making Northwestern play their game. That's kind of how this is going to have to go. Each team's going to want to try to enforce their style on the other. Brandon Cloggett pushing it forward for the Wildcats. Right in front of that Spartan bench on the far side. Michigan State comes in this one. Six, seven, and two overall record. Three, three, and one in conference play. They are on a two-game losing streak. But of course, that came against a really tough number eight Maryland team and a number 13 Ohio State team. Both close losses. Both lost by a goal. And those are the top two teams right now in the conference. So those are the teams you're trying to chase at this point. Michigan State's not going to be able to catch them in terms of the standings for the Big Ten tournament, but... As Nora, I think, touched on in the open, they do need help from Maryland today if they want to host a tournament game next week. Lots of Big Ten tournament implications around the Big Ten. Is obviously, if you're Michigan State, you want to get out to this one hot. You've only had a, about a goal since October 16th. Before then, they did beat Rutgers. But like we talked about, it's just the lack of offense in those previous two matches, obviously against really good defenses. And you talked about how good Maryland and Ohio State are, but obviously you need to find that here today. Michigan State comes in 6-1-1 one one when they score first and 0-6-1 oh, when they don't. 
that first goal is so important yeah. for this Spartan team. And so far in this game, I've liked what I've seen from them. They're they're trying to push the tempo, play aggressive, trying to get that first goal. They know that they're they play better when they have that lead. Indeed, they do. And obviously, momentum is everything in this. Now Northwestern working from their attacking third. Northwestern just hasn't been able to string together the passes so far in this game. They've they've been a little bit sloppy, but here in the last few minutes, they've been able to keep the ball here in the attacking third. Brandon Cloggett, the sophomore, 5'8", 158. Transfer from Pitt. Sends it in. Affinity grabs this one. Goalkeeper from Michigan State trying to push it forward. Spetafora is waiting for this one as it lands. Spartans trying to work quickly. Let's slide it over to Jack Zuge. Now near side, that's Nick Stone. Stone will give it up to Perkins on the Big Ten logo. No, send it back over to Josh Adam. Elijah Howe now with it for Michigan State, just trying to set up some kind of sequence. Here in the feeling out process in this first half, trying to figure out what each team's kind of formation structure kind of is, which ways that you can attack, what are the angles of the passes, what's the best you know way that you can make an attack on the opposing team. It takes a few minutes usually to figure that out every match. Undercutting Luis Sala right there as we have a stoppage as we got to look at Owen Finnerty right there from Michigan State as we have a player, Ron Brown, being helped off. Finnerty really has been key for Michigan State and down the stretch has been fantastic as well for these Spartans. Yeah, he had his two consecutive shutouts last month against Michigan and Wisconsin. And since then, he's been solid. He's been fine. But as you said, Owen, the offense just hasn't been there for Michigan State. So there's right. little room for error when it comes to his performance in that. But he's been nothing short of sensational this season. And honestly, no matter what sport you play, if there's a lack of offense, your defense is only going to hold for so long before they get tired. Yeah, you got to play complementary. You have to have both sides coming together to play as one team. That's you know something that you hear at the younger levels of every game, but especially in soccer, it's so important to have both sides, both ends. Cami over to Cloggett. And over to Garner is Northwestern slowing the tempo down. 38 minutes remaining in this first half between these two squads. I was going to send it into the Northwestern bench for a throw in. This one stolen back by Northwestern. Ron Brown now with it. Come near side to Logan Weaver. And it's set into that corner there for Bardia Kimavi. And this one headed down by Howe. Well, Spartans trying to work the other way. Chased down and headed away from Spadafora there by Nigel Prince. And that one will be headed out. Nice job there by Prince. He's been active so far early in this match. He had the deflection off that corner that Michigan State had earlier. And then right there, really nice play to get Jab it cleared. Back to Perkins. He'll cross it in and almost a good opportunity for Spadafora to redirect that one in. Just missed on the attempt. Now there's Tyler Crawford over to Luis Sala. Good opportunity here for Michigan State. And this one booed away and Beck can't control it. Just looked like a poor touch there from Stout, who looked like he got his foot on it. Just It was a one-timer, just didn't get it, his whole foot on it. Wasn't able to put it away. Now, Colin McCammy pushing the pace. There, Kimmy Vela. There's back. Spartans get it back. Talking about goal scoring for these Wildcats. 11 different Cats have tallied a goal this season. It's been coming from all sorts of players for these Wildcats. Now Michigan State, a good opportunity. Here's Spadafora. 
as Perkin hits the ground, and this one booted out there by Nigel Prince. There it is, Prince once again making the stop for Northwestern, but they're playing with fire here. Keep giving Michigan State these opportunities to cross it from the outside. Second corner coming up here for the Spartans. Corner opportunity here. And work it over to Crawford who cross it in. Back out to Luis Sala. Sent over and headed in. One nil Michigan State early in this one as Jonathan Stout picks up the goal for the Spartans. And Jonathan Stout has been on an absolute roll for the Spartans in the last week and a half here. That was just a beautiful header from Stout to put Michigan State on the board and what a start for them. Stout's fourth of the season. Get another look at that one. Beautiful assist right there, set up perfectly. And that's exactly what Michigan State need to start this one off strong. Stout had two goals and two assists last week against Rutgers and then right there with another goal right here. He's now the points leader for Michigan State this season. And that was just brilliant. I mean, that header was perfect. This kid has been on fire. The freshman, 5'10", 160 from Grand Rapids, Michigan making his impact felt early in this one. 35-17 remaining in the first half and Spartans have cracked that scoreboard. Now how will Northwestern answer? Northwestern knows right now they're playing for their lives this season. If they don't win this game, they're not going to the Big Ten tournament. So we'll see how they can respond to that adversity. It's a big one for these Wildcats, like you said. Just trying to stay alive at Michigan State. Jumps out to that 1-0 lead early. Perkins with it at midfield. Trying to push it forward once again. Jack Beck, far side. There's once again Jonathan Stout. Stout gonna get over to Crawford. He'll keep it in. Luis Sala gives it up to Perkins. Bar down, did it go in? No. Perkins started celebrating and I don't think it crossed the line. Wow, that was an insanely close opportunity. We will go look at that one as the referee stops this one. Get another look at this one. Beautiful job right there. Salah lets it go. Perkins barred down. I don't, it's, I can't tell from that from angle. From that angle, it's gonna be really hard to tell. That was an incredible shot from Perkins just right into the upper part. It just got, just clipped that crossbar and came down. They're, they're currently reviewing it to see if maybe it did cross that line, but again, in soccer, the entire ball is gonna have to be over that goal line, even right. if just a sliver of it is, and it's not a goal. Perkins obviously started celebrating and then put his hands over his head because it was that close, and this is honestly something that can really change the momentum of a game. So this call will stand get another look at this one but you can clearly tell the momentum is in favor of Michigan State but that was a big stop right there obviously the bar helping out the Wildcats get a nice slow look at that one and yeah. it does appear to be yeah. short when it slowed down it looked like that was clearly short of the line so good call there from the officials and we'll just play on. job right there on the replay and now Northwestern trying to answer going the other way Wildcats trying to push the pace the other way, but for Michigan State, you saw that Perkins opportunity and then the stout goal. At what point do you, how, how can you stop that sort of thing, Michael? I mean, it's just, you know, defensive structure. You have to be able to communicate and know your assignments. On, on that one, at least for Perkins, it just seemed like no one for Northwestern went to go clear the ball. Mm -hmm. It just kind of tr trickled right into the center of the field, and that's just, that's a no-go, and as we said, in almost any game, you don't want the ball in the middle of the field, and it was just, I think, lack of communication. That one almost went in. Finnerty was backing up, just kept on backpedaling and went over his head, and luckily, why the goal for Michigan State? But man, the Spartans almost had a bad break there. Wildcats trying to seize back momentum at midfield currently, and now Michigan State Dispatafora, pushing 
The other way now, slow it down to Crawford. Spedafora. Gonna go over to Stone. Now Will Perkins with it, working into that box. We'll cross it over and that one will go curl wide, but you can see Right now, Will Perkins is feeling confident with that shot. Yeah, we talked about him at the top of the broadcast. He's playing with a lot of confidence. As I said, he, he felt that he left some things on the field last year that he could have played better and helped Michigan State have a better year than they did. And this year, he's certainly delivering on that. We talked about him in the open as our key player and a couple of shots early from Perkins. But Michigan State trying to... Pile it on right now. Obviously early in this one in Northwestern, you answer, and it's a brand new game. But Michigan State currently has that momentum. Now given back to Northwestern. That's Joseph Arena out front, and a beautiful save right there. And in on the rebound, it's 1-1, courtesy of Nigel Prince. And just persistence there from the Wildcats. They had been looking at those opportunities so far throughout the match. And right here, just a rebound that came right out. Finnerty makes a beautiful save right there. It comes right back out to Van Devender and he is able to bury it right into the back of the net. Nice answer right there by Northwestern. You look back at that Will Perkins shot now that went off the crossbar. It could have been 2-0. Instead, it's 1-1. That's how close that is. The game of inches right there, and Michigan State gives up that goal right there. Nice work by Northwestern. Working back early in this one, obviously plenty of time still left in the first half. Every shot matters. That's just what it comes down to. And for Perkins, just a tough break with that ball not quite crossing the goal line, but Northwestern give them a lot of credit. They were able to find a response. So Javen Van Deventer was credited with the goal. Logan Weaver with the assist. Michigan State fans trying to urge their team back in this one. Obviously tied back up. A couple of early goals from each team. Now Callan McCammy, far side corner. And this one stolen back by Michigan State. Perkins now will control it for the Spartans. Ron Brown, now near side. Gonna work into that one. Spardia. Now back into that corner there for Colin McCammy. Gonna cross it in, cleared up in the air by Josh Adam. Back over to Northwestern. This one crossed in, headed out once again by Adam. It's just amazing what one goal can do for momentum in games like these. I mean, it's just, you've just felt the shift right now of how Northwestern right now is controlling this game yep. on offense. And it really took the air out of this place. And there was a couple of really good shots by Michigan State, including the goal. But now Northwestern tied it right back up. And it looks like they have momentum in this one. Good opportunity here on the throw in. This one headed down. And we'll go back to Michigan State. Michigan State just needs to go back to who they are. Play outside in soccer. Now near side, it's about a four trying to chase it down but can't get there in time. It'll go to Brandon Cloggett. To Colin McCammy. Trying to slow things down, wrap it around for Northwestern. Here's Ethan Dudley. We talked about him in the open as a key player. Now Michigan State coming the other way. That's Jack Beck leading the charge. The graduate, and that one booed away before Stout could get to it. Nice play there by Nigel Prince. Prince is, once again, with a really good play there, but... Northwestern really brings their wing backs really high up, almost to midfield when they're on the attack, which just leaves two defenders back for Northwestern. And I think that's played a bit of a role with how Michigan State's been able to attack so far with just those wing backs playing so high up. Now near side 
for the Spartans. Will Perkins going to tap it over, and Spadafora will try to chase it down, but not before Northwestern can get it right back. It's been a back-and-forth affair. Very close on both sides. Three shots for Michigan State, two for Northwestern. Two fouls for each squad as well. Such a big match. Of course, for Northwestern, just trying to make the tournament at the moment. Michigan State battling for home field. An update, Michigan has taken a 1-0 lead over Penn State at the moment in Ann Arbor. Yeah, and if Michigan wins in that game, it doesn't matter what Northwestern does here today. Correct. Obviously, it's still a lot of time in that one as well. It's still in the first half. This one, booed away by Elijah Howe. So an offsides call. We'll give it back to the Spartans. Both teams are kind of settled in here in this one. Both getting foot on the... Ball. Get a look at Russell Payne in his second season. Such a good recruiter for this Northwestern team, and he's known for that around the soccer country, and transfers have been a big thing as well for this Wildcat squad. Came over from West Point, where he was the coach there for quite a long time, and now he has an opportunity here at a Big Ten school to be able to deliver, and so far they haven't had the season that I think that they wanted this year, but the future is bright with Payne in the coach's spot for the these defense wild there from Michigan State trying to work it around as Kimiava. <laughs> Playing close and that one gonna go off the ref there. Spadafor was playing close there to Ethan Dudley. So we'll reset. I just feel like this game has really slowed down here so far. After the first 10 minutes was just so up-tempo, a lot of shots, very quick play. But right here, it's just very slow, very deliberate, methodical. Now let's clog it inside the box, and this one cleared away nicely by Josh Adam. Working on that far side, Spartans just trying to clear this one out of the Northwestern's attacking third. Now they'll reset, try something new for the Wildcats. Dudley trying to tell his players to get open, get in those passing lanes. They're just not moving very easily right now. Credit to Michigan State for kind of disguising their defense a little bit. Now Joe Prince over f near side, close to the Spartan bench. Good defense there by Beck. Now Spadafore closely on Nigel Prince. He'll boot it ahead towards that far side corner and that one will go out. And we'll have our first substitution of the match as well. Get a look at Damon Rensing in his 14th season as Michigan State head coach. 130 victories. Pretty good win percentage, and he's trying to put his Spartans in a good spot heading into the Big Ten tournament once again. Michigan State under Rensing has been a pretty solid program. They've had a few down years, but they're looking to get back to that level. College Cup appearance in 2018 and just trying to you know, get back to what they were in the early years of his tenure. That one will go out. Just Elijah Howell has a conversation with the official over there. Christopher Thagard is in for Joseph Arena, and now Michigan State Gonna try to carry into the attacking for third for Michigan for the Spartans. Luis Sala gonna tap it back to Beck. Now far side over to Crawford. Trying to work around a defender and that one cleared away. Northwestern did a good job there. Closing off the sideline, letting the sideline be your friend. Be that extra defender 
not let Michigan State get out wide as we know that they want to do. They want to go outside in on the attacks, but Northwestern wasn't going to allow that to happen there. Spartans get it right back at midfield. Elijah Howe going to tap it to Luis Sala. Back over to Howe. Oh, Perkins got tripped up right there, and Spartans get it back. Perkins hits the ground hard, and whistle will blow, stop time, and referee reaching for his pocket, and out will come the yellow card. Get another look at this one right here, and slide, and Perkins goes down hard, but he's a, appears to be okay for Michigan State, which is a good sign as well. Just a little bit aggressive, a little dangerous of a play there. I think it's a fair card. Logan Weaver was issued that one. For unsporting. Weaver goes over and apologizes to Will Perkins after, which is a good sign as well. You always want to see good sportsmanship. This one redirected in and cleared back out by Northwestern. Headed by Stone. Wildcats trying to clear it out of their zone. Still three shots from Michigan State, two for Northwestern. Both shots on goal for those Wildcats. Just over 22 minutes remaining in the first half. It was a fast-paced one to start this one, and now starting to slow down. That's just the feeling out process. That just happens throughout the match. If you're trying to, as I said, you're trying to kind of enforce your style of play on the other team, and then eventually it just kind of evens out. The answer's always somewhere in the middle. And then you just play your game. So we'll go back to the goalkeeper, Gardner, and wait for his guys to set up. There's Ethan Dudley with it. Northwestern trying to work this one forward. Had that good answer. Obviously, Michigan State had that clear momentum to start with the stout goal. And then the Perkins shot that went off the crossbar and down. And Northwestern was able to answer with a goal of their own after that missed opportunity from Michigan State. And now we're all tied up. And I think you touched on it after Northwestern scored that equalizer, but those shots always seem, or those missed shots, I should say, like Perkins, always seem to come back into play. Mm -hmm. They always yeah. seem to play a role. And for Michigan State, you have to make sure that it doesn't play a role in the end. We'll have to find that out as this one progresses. Now Beck will get over to Perkins, stolen away. This one far side at midfield and Wildcats get it back. This one, Finnerty will boot to midfield and there's Luis Sala with it. Now far side over to Crawford. Trying to get it over to Spadafora but it was stolen away by Callum McCammy. Perkins trying to get it back and does. Good work here. Good opportunity for the Spartans. Stout with it. Over to Perkins. Has a couple shots in this one. I'm going to work it over to Nick Stone. And an easy scoop up right there for Christian Garner. Nice job by Stone there to at least get a shot off. Michigan State did not have the numbers there on that attack. It was about three on five in favor of the Wildcats, but still able to get a nice look on goal. Over to Nigel Prince. He's made a couple of nice defensive stops already in this one. Now Dudley in the midfield. So Kyle McCammy trying to work into the attacking third. Gets it right back. Now tapped over for the Wildcats. Crossed in. Good opportunity. Just couldn't find any bodies there out in front of the net. Now Spadafora with it. And 
Another sub getting loose enough to come in this one for the Wildcats in a second. Just under 19 minutes to play in this first half. Stone with it near side. And was looking for Sala, but just too much on that one. Now the sub coming in. Out coming in is Ron Brown. Looks like Andrew Stevens is coming in. The graduate 6-2 Wildcat. This one's stolen back by the Wildcats. Infinity will go grab this one. Stevens checking in. He's one of the leaders there in minutes this season for the Wildcats. Off the bench, too, which is pretty impressive, which means he'll probably be in quite a bit for the rest of this game. Michigan State, no substitution yet in this one. Just keeping their starters out there at the moment. Now over to Prince. And work it to midfield for Colin McCammy. Now near side, that's Dudley. Trying once again to find that corner, just too much on this one. Infinity able to skip, scoop it up. Not a lot of opportunities here in the last few minutes, as we said. It, it, the, the pace has really slowed down in this game. Defense for both sides really starting to lock down as well. That one headed down by Dudley, and Northwestern gets it right back. Now Spartans trying to control and it's turnover at midfield. We'll have a foul right there. It looked like Zuge just got a little too much of the body there and he'll be whistled there for a push. Now Dudley will work near side. Over to Logan Weaver. Now towards the middle, good opportunity here. Colin McCammy and good job once again on defense by Michigan State. Northwestern thought that Michigan State kind of touched that with one of the cleats, but the referee says no and sets a goal kick. Jenny Ferry will come in. One of the seniors is gonna be honored after the conclusion of this match here at DeMartin Field. Now working inside that midfield circle. Spartans trying to go near side. There's Stone, and that one will be deflected off a Wildcat there for a throw in for Michigan State. Trying to work into their attacking third. This one back over to Landefeld. It's the other sub that checked in. Landefeld will also be one of those more experienced Spartans on the pitch at the moment. That's a nice thing to be able to do to bring a couple seniors off the bench and give you fresh legs and some leadership there that you need. You can't always just have them all in the starting lineup. Just having those players to come off the bench and help out, that's priceless. Of course, and obviously you want to give those guys that this is going to be their last home regular season match a chance to play, but you also got to realize that you're trying to play for home field at the same time. Yeah, it's one of those things if you have to get in kind of the perspective of it doesn't have to be your last home game. Right. If, you know, if they win this game and they get some help, they're going to be hosting one more game at DeMartin here in the Big Ten tournament. Otherwise, this, you know, with a loss, it guarantees that they won't be hosting one of those games. So, you know, you have to do what you have to do to get to that, one, just Correct. that next game every single time. As Elijah Howe hit the deck there for Michigan State. Check that. It was Jack Beck. To Northwestern trying to work the other way. Not a ton of action these past few minutes as defense has been stout for both teams. Now inside that box for Northwestern. Good opportunity as Howe and Beck playing closely. And this one booted way high and wide. That was an interesting decision there. To I mean, the shot wasn't 
the poor part, but it was just not being able to get the ball down. It was just kind of coming in, leaning back, kind of full steam. Yeah. There was really no way he was going to be able to control that ball enough to even make it on goal. And it just kind of seemed like a little bit out of control there for Northwestern. Yeah, he just wasn't even close, to be honest. This one to midfield, headed up in the air, and uh, back and forth once again. Foul going in favor of the Michigan State Spartans that time. Jack Zuge. Yeah, Kimiavi and Zuge have kind of been going at it right in the middle of the field most of the day. Kimiavi picks up the foul right there. Now Howe, far side over to Crawford. Tyler Crawford, one of those freshmen on this team. Freshmen have made a big impact for the Michigan State Spartans. Now Kellen Landefeld. Going to cross it in, good opportunity, and that one headed away nicely there by Van Deventer. Spartans get it back, though. Stone with it. Going to work to the corner. And we'll try to send that one in, but we'll get the curl on that one, and we'll go behind the net. You touched on the freshman making a big impact for Michigan State this year. Top drawer soccer announced the freshman top 100 list last week. Michigan State had two freshmen on that list, Jake Spadafora and Jonathan Stout. Spadafora ranked number 37, Stout 82. So really high honor for those two freshmen and as a reward for the play that they've had so far this season for the Spartans. Kyle Schooneman will also check in. Freshman, once again, their young Michigan State roster. Uh, back and forth action at midfield right now. Now we're going to go near side of Logan Weaver. Trying to work between some Spartans. Now we'll place it in the corner. Kimiavi will get stolen away by back on his pass. Wildcats get it back. A lot of commotion right near that box. Now we'll set it back outside. It's tackle to keep it alive, and now Beck will get it back for Michigan State. Trying to push it forward, was looking for Grayson Mercer for the Spartans, but Wildcats able to steal that one. Yeah, Prince going to work far side in front of the Spartan bench. Well, I'll say there goes Prince again. Just He's played a phenomenal first half for the Wildcats. Been their best player, I think, so far in this game. Alfinity back over to Elijah Howe. Trying to get something going with 11 minutes left in this first half. This is a key time in this game. For each team, you obviously want to go in at least a goal up into the half. But a tie is going to be, or at the moment, is going to be okay as well in terms of going into half. But... Getting that goal going into halftime is such a momentum boost when you come out of where you come off the benches for the second half. In the reverse perspective of that as well, you also want to be careful because you don't want to give up that late half goal as well because really can change the momentum heading into the locker room as well. I've always thought and always said that these you know, the last ten minutes of the first half and the first ten minutes of the second half are some of the most, it's the most important period in the game, maybe besides the last few minutes, but mm -hmm. it's just so important when it comes to momentum and being able to put advantage between you and your opponent and getting a goal here for either one of these teams would be big. Paul's son will come in for Kimiavi. No under ten minutes remaining. Prince will sit with it for a second now. Give it up to Dudley. That one intercepted nicely by Michigan State. That's Schooneman. Now he's pushing the other way. Good opportunity to try to cross it in. That one was all over it with the Wildcats. And Prince and the goalkeeper, Garner, just clashing legs right there, both hitting the ground. They appear to be okay after some friendly fire. Yeah, it looks like they just bumped knees there. Fortunately, both seem to be okay. It's one of those things they'll probably laugh about after the game. Yeah. Now Crawford to back in front of the Spartan bench. 
Try to get some late half momentum offensively as Michigan State. Trying to refine that offensive identity that they had early in this one and just haven't been able to find it since, since that Perkins shot that went off the crossbar. The quick passes for Michigan State that they want. They want to make the quick pass in the middle and then just like that get it outside and then be able to bring it back into the middle. Schooneman gets pushed to the ground by Sun and a good opportunity here for Michigan State. We'll see who's going to take this, but this is a really good opportunity. This will be a direct kick here for the Spartans. Looks like they're going to have Beck take it. Now look at this one at the shove from Sun. You see a little push right there, and you get that call every time. Yeah, good call there from the officials. And now we'll see if Michigan State can capitalize on it. This is one of the few set pieces that they've had. We'll see if maybe they try to go on goal. They're also setting up for a potential cross. Jack Beck, one of those guys in there, DeWitt, native of DeWitt, Michigan. At one, trying to set up back inside, looking for a deflection, and what a job by Gardner. Just swatting that one away, and Michigan State could smell a goal right there, but Gardner was all over it. I mean, you hit on it. Beck was looking for the deflection there, but I don't think he was expecting one from Northwestern. Mm -hmm. That was almost an own goal right there. Get another look at it right off of looked like Prince maybe. Yeah. And then deflected away by Garner. And as said, that was just that's a terrific save. Nice job. Right there by the goalkeeper, keeping this one tied up. Out comes Kyle McCammy for Northwestern and Michigan State trying to get a good opportunity here. This one popped in the air and will land on top of the net. So Michigan State will miss out on the Critical opportunity right there. A little more urgency from the Spartans here in the last few minutes of this half. Finally generating some action on the offensive end once again. Great opportunity that they just had there on the set piece. But let's see if they can get back to that and stay with it. There's some hard contact near side. And Schooneman will get the yellow card right there after the tackle. Still slow to get up. Get another look at this one. Yeah, that's just dangerous there from Schooneman. You, you, you can't do that, especially right on the boundary. That's going to be a card almost every time. Logan Weaver gets back to his feet and appears to be okay. This one. Go all the way to the far side. Over to Brandon Cloggett, the sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia. This one stolen back by Michigan State, but Dudley, good job to clear that one over to the softball field here in Michigan State. Now back, trying to get back from Michigan State and a good tackle there, this time by Elijah Howe. Now over to Nick Stone, Josh Adam with it. Just under six minutes remaining in this first half. Crawford can't save it from going in the Spartan bench. Poor pass there from Elijah Howe. Just a little bit too out in front of Crawford, and that's a turnover. Let's see if Northwestern can take advantage of that turnover. Cloggett with the throw in. That one headed up in there by Crawford, and over to Sun. Going to tap it right to the Spartans, though, and shoot him in. Gets it back and face planting right there. Hard was Ferry. So a foul right there and Spartans get it back. Time continues to tick away here in this first half. Ever since that goal by Northwestern, it's just been both teams kind of going back and forth, each, each having their opportunities, but nothing really generated. We had the one just a few minutes ago with Michigan State, but... Other than that, not much. Good defense there by Dudley. And now Northwestern will send it back to their keeper. Spartans trying to get something going offensively, but Northwestern all over it. Now Sun, good opportunity here in the corner. We'll try to slow it down, let his guys regroup. Cross it in, and Howe heads it up in the air. Now Adam will tap it over to Sun. Weaver battling for it. 
Still with it is the Wildcats. And Schooneman gets it back from Michigan State. Not able to take advantage of that continuation it looked like from that foul that happened in the, the center of the pitch as he, the referee's coming to book Adam right here. Yeah, Adam's going to get a yellow card for some choice words, I believe, to the official. Yeah, you could tell when Northwestern was starting that attack, it was a continuation off of a delayed penalty. It seemed like from the center of the pitch. But Michigan State will still get possession here because of that. Spartans trying to get back on top. And they start with that 1-0 no lead, courtesy of Jonathan Stout. And then Northwestern was able to answer. Adam will go pursue this one and tap it over to Finnerty. Just under four minutes remaining in this first half. Crawford trying to push forward to Grayson Mercer and does find him, but that pass will go too far for Michigan State, and Northwestern was all over it. A substitution coming in. Substitution number 11, Eric, Smith. Eric Smiths will check in. The senior coming in with some experience for the Wildcats. Mercer will tap back to back. Now over to Adam. And go near side to Stone. This one tapped around Schooneman. Got it deflected up into the crowd here at DeMartin Field. Really good attendance for the top half for Michigan State. Men's match and then MSU versus Minnesota quarterfinals for the Big Ten tournament coming up after this one on Big Ten Network. Michigan State's always, they've had good attendance all year. They're near the top in the Big Ten in that department. All the fans always seem to show out to support their team. Absolutely. Great day for weather as well. Very nice day for soccer. Michigan State trying to wrap it around. There's Crawford. Just under two minutes to work. This one back over to Adam. Now with it is Jacob Cromer. He's trying to get over to Stone. I'll have to race up and get it back to Adam. Under 90 seconds remaining in the first half. Sliding down and foul once again. This time it was on Brandon Cloggett. Motion starting to run a little bit of high, a little bit of chippiness there on the sideline there. As we approach the end of the half here, both teams just looking for that, that go-ahead goal here before the break. So a minute remaining. That one will go last off of a Wildcat, says the official. So Michigan State will get a corner opportunity. I don't know if that was the right call there. I thought that might have gone off a foot of a Spartan. But nonetheless, it'll be a corner kick for Michigan State. It's now Crawford with it. Just got... About 40 seconds left, and this one will head out. Crawford will toss it in. It's Kellen Landefeld. This one will head out. Schooneman was trying to keep it in for Michigan State, but couldn't. And now 20 seconds left. Northwestern just going to milk this one down to halftime. So 1-1, one, one, the expected score between these two teams. And... Michigan State obviously started out with that big goal from Jonathan Stout to start off, and then Javen Van Deventer, he answered big time for Northwestern just about four minutes later, and that's where we, we remain 1-1. Any final thoughts heading into the half, Michael? I mean, missed opportunities has kind of been the name of the first half. We've talked about the Will Perkins miss. Play once again here in Northwestern, trying to keep their season alive. 
as the Wildcats will start off with this one. Christopher Thagard will tap it back for the Wildcats and we are underway here in half number two. Wildcats gonna try to start hot out of these out of the locker room and Michigan State trying to get back on top. Grayson Mercer with it for Michigan State. Now we'll tap it ahead to Ferry. Wildcats get it right back, their son. Trying to work between the Spartan defenders. Playing close is Will Perkins and now the Wildcats will work it around. Nice footwork there from Ethan Dudley to escape the few defenders. Let the Wildcats reset. Goes off of Weaver now. This one over and out. So Michigan State will a goal kick. Smart play by Adam there to just kind of let that go out of bounds. Reset for a goal kick. Much better, more desirable play than to try to play it out of the corner. one popped up in the air by Beck. Now headed down. Northwestern trying to control it, but then we'll send it off the stands here. Both teams looking for some sort of momentum with control of it. And no team really went into the break, I guess, with establishing any sort of momentum that they can really bring out of the break in these first you know, 10 minutes or so of this second half and so they're gonna have to find a way to generate it right now this one gonna go far side over to Logan Weaver Guard closely by Will Perkins and now inside that box popped around Sun trying to get a deflection in and that one will go away to the side So a corner coming up for the Wildcats. Not many set piece opportunities so far for Northwestern, but they definitely can score on these. They have this season. See how Michigan State chooses to defend it. First corner of the match for the Wildcats. This one crossed in, headed, and will trickle away from Thagard. Trying to Chase that one down, and Michigan State will reset. That was Dudley getting his head on that one there, and as we said, he's one of the leading goal scorers for this Northwestern team, and he plays on defense. So how is that the case? Well, that's exactly how. It's on those set pieces where the defensemen kind of come up and play offense. He's able to get his head on it and make plays in that fashion. So 42 minutes remaining. Regulation of this one. Sun, and work to midfield. Chasing it down is Elijah Howe and swing over to Crawford. Michigan State still looking for that, some offensive identity. You really just keep on looking back at the Will Perkins shot that went off the crossbar and man, had that gone in, would have been in a totally different game. It would have been a completely different game because two nothing presents so many different scenarios for what can happen. Here's Stout, already has a goal in this one. Gonna work inside the box, cross it over, and get it back, and it will be deflected off of Gardner. Perkins still with it, and then blocked up front. Perkins gets it back, still inside the box, and now outside of it, back gonna wind up and send it way over the crossbar and out. Man, another good chance for Michigan State, squandered. Yeah, look at that shot by Stout. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. Just a tremendous save from Garner to get it out. And then Jack Beck on the, the follow can't quite get it. Looked like he might have actually sent that one into the river. Three saves for Garner has been fantastic besides giving up before the Stout goal. But a couple of really nice diving saves in this one. Garner's been phenomenal so far in this game. Just the one kind of blip so far was that goal by Stout. And he's playing with his team's life on the line. Here's Howe over to Stout. And work it back over to Elijah Howe. Pursued by Thagard.
Crawford to midfield for Grayson Mercer. Now Stout, there's a lot of jersey grabbing right there between Sun and also Ferry. And it'll go Northwestern's way. Ferry was claiming that Sun was grabbing back as well. Yeah, it was one of those kind of going both ways, but Ferry kind of tugged Sun's jersey right there, like right in front of the official, and you're never going to be able to get away with that one. Now over to the corner, and Stout will get it back. Good defense there. Mercer gets shoved to the ground there by Nigel Prince. There's Stout with it, trying to get into the attacking third. Crawford just not able to keep it in as Howe, and he'll push it back out. Now they got to get back quickly here on defense, reset, not allow Northwestern to get a good look here. And looked like Northwestern saw that, so they're going to slow it down. Brendan Cloggett. Tap it around. Now trying to control it as Northwestern. Skejahara. Cross this one in, headed back out there by Jack Zuge. Back around off Sun, was trying to redirect it there, but Perkins is all over it. Now Sun will get it back. Trying to turn around Nick Stone, and Stout will go corral it. State so far hasn't really been able to get much into the Northwestern end. Obviously, we saw the one opportunity from Stout there a few minutes ago, but since then, Northwestern's really done a nice job possessing the ball, keeping it off the foot of some dangerous Spartan players. It's owned back by the Wildcats. There's Kamikami. Working in that center circle there. There's Northwestern. Going to work far side. Skajahara. Work around Spartan defender, trying to get inside the box. We'll tap it in. There's Kimo V. And that one will go into the bushes. Looks like a goal kick awarded to Michigan State. Shots wise, Michigan State has seven, Northwestern has three. But a couple of really nice saves from Garner has kept this one tied for the Wildcats. Perkins gets it intercepted here. Kimovi gonna work inside and that one shot will go wide. Howe was playing close on defense. Just a mistake there by Perkins right in the center, just turning it over right in the middle and very easy play there for Kimi Avi. Get another look at it, just a little bit wide, just wasn't able to get it on target, but Michigan State dodged a bullet there. That was that was very mm -hmm. dangerous from Will Perkins. And especially for a redshirt senior, a play that you should not be making. Those are mistakes you have to avoid, and it's criti critical of a game. Winding up and sending across is Finnerty. This one batted up in the air. Perkins will try to get it back. Sun now controlling. Now Perkins gets it once again taken away there by Ethan Dudley. Now Spartans coming the other way. Grayson Mercer tries to slow things up, work around. Inside the box, it gets blocked up front. Now Kimovi coming the other way. Back and forth, some quick action. Here in this past minute, and nice save right there by Nick Stone. Stop it from getting over to Kimothy. And it has been back and forth, but Northwestern has really put the pressure on Michigan State to be able to respond here. Maybe they can right here. Here's Jack Beck. Good defense once again. Crawford now with it for Michigan State. Over to Elijah Howe. 
Jack Zuge. Back over to Adam. Michigan State still trying to get some offensive identity here. Over to Crawford, near side. Going to wind up and go off of the shoulder of Haggard. Spartans still looking to crack that scoreboard ever since that Jonathan Stout goal early in this one. Now Crawford. Gonna work between some defenders. Now get it over to Perkins. It just passes well behind him, so he has to go back and get it in front of the Spartan bench. First time here in a few minutes that Michigan State's able to hold on to possession of the ball. See if they can get something going here with their quick passing game. Now a good opportunity here for Michigan State. That's Ferry inside and good defense once again by Northwestern. Crawford with it inside the box. Now back out to Jonathan Stout. will cross it in looking for Perkins. Couldn't find him though. And Sun will go pursue it and clear it out. Deflection there from Northwestern created that opportunity for Michigan State but able to recover nicely on defense. Get it cleared. Make Michigan State reset here. Another opportunity once again, Ferry. Here's Perkins, and that one will be batted back out. And popped up near by Nigel Prince, Stout trying to head it down, and that will be cleared out once again by the Wildcats. Northwestern's defense has really come to play today. They've been very solid ever since the opening minutes of the game. Nothing's changed so far here in the second half. They've been really good. Back in a type of over to Howe. Now near side, they're stout. Cross it and looking for Perkins just well over his head and out. Some coaching on Michigan State side that's used to Northwestern. Slow to get up there is a Wildcat. Is appears to be Logan Weaver. Yes, stop and play. Second time Weaver's gone down hard so far in this match. It looks like they're taking him off. So well, at least out. go look at him. Yeah. He didn't seem very happy that he was taken off the pitch here. And trainer will go meet him in the corner there. Another Northwestern substitution, number 22, Jason Cyrus. Jason Cyrus will check in for Northwestern. Senior. Defender, 5'10", 170. His first minutes of the match here. Kim v over to Prince. Now deflected up, controlled by Cloggett. This one, Crawford will try to keep in and does. Kim v between two defenders and gets stolen back by Michigan State. Now Jonathan Stout. Trying to find Mercer and Prince. Mercer with it. Good opportunity here. And Prince was all over it. Nice play once again. Nigel Prince has been playing a defensive show so far. Yeah, it's a clinic so far from Nigel Prince. And right there, he got beat by a step. I mean, it was barely a step. Grayson Mercer had him in. Nice play. Very dangerous tackle to make as we get another look here. That's a very dangerous play. But he's able to get the ball, clear it out safely, and... Make Michigan State have to take a corner. Everybody. The foul inside the box right there appeared to be on the Spartans, and now Northwestern will get it back. Northwestern's got to get back to what they were doing here. Get a look at. A guy that's very familiar with Northwestern who spent six seasons there, Joe Heeren, and 
obviously you get to know that squad and obviously there's a new coaching staff now at Northwestern as well, but always want to win against your former team. Yeah, and he's familiar with kind of how both programs operate a little bit, as you mentioned, new coaching staff for Northwestern. But at the same time, that's it can be a benefit, I guess, to both or to him to be able to help out and have that knowledge of both programs and their inner workings. This one, Adam will kick it away from the Wildcats there, and this one will be retreated for a foul. We've kind of felt the, this game shift a little bit. Early on in the second half, Northwestern was the one kind of applying the pressure, getting the shots. Michigan State's kind of taking on that role right now. Mercer gets away with a little bit of shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder contact. Perfectly legal. So Perkins punch it back, and Adam will work it over to Elijah Howe. Crawford will get it over to Ferry. Johnny Ferry from the seniors trying to make his impact felt here. Jonathan Stout inside the box, just losing his footing, now getting up between defenders. Oh, wow, almost a filthy move right there. Just couldn't hold on to it. That one will go out. That was almost an incredible goal, potentially, for Jonathan Stout. That was, the footwork was outstanding right there. That's one of those things where, as we get another look at it, I don't, I mean, Stout just kind of kept going. It's just kind of one of those things, your body's just kind of moving and you're just kind of going with the flow. But nice control there from Stout. So Rom Brown will check in as well as Javen Van Deventer. Had the goal for Northwestern. Under 30 minutes remaining in this second half. Both teams really need a win, as we've touched on many times, but they can't do that if they tie. So obviously 1-1 one, one here in East Lansing, but Indiana still up 1-0 over Maryland. Something to watch for, and it's 2-2. Two, two. Michigan and Penn State all knotted up in the second half. We have a yellow card here. Get another look at this one on the replay. Beck, a little tripped up there. and it Looked like he almost got stepped on. Another just a dangerous play there down by the feet. You just got to be careful with what you're doing there. It didn't look necessarily intentional or anything like that. Just one of those. It's just dangerous to have your feet in your cleats down in that area. So that would go on Andrew Stevens. Ferry will just kick it right out. That was interesting. I don't really know what <laughs> happened there. I don't. It looked like he was trying to spread it out wide to Perkins. It looked like, and he just completely mishit it. Just a mistake yeah, I, for Michigan State. That's. That was not a good pass. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Either way, Michigan State now gets it back though, and found Northwestern. Well, see now they get to try to get another set piece coming up here, a little farther back this time, but yeah. nonetheless, set piece opportunity. And this one will go to a Michigan State teammate. Will Perkins will instead send it out after receiving the pass. Looks like some communication issues for Michigan State. Perkins was kind of looking at his teammates after that one. Somebody I think was supposed to be there and wasn't. Something you got to iron out here in these in this final 30 minutes. Perkins is playing keep away right now. This one will be sent back after. Well, it seems like the players are ready to go, but the official is still trying to figure things out. Yeah, well, I guess Perkins kind of did his job then there. He kind of allowed his defense to get reset, make Northwestern have to go the length of the field. Looks like Spadafora and Luis Sala are getting ready to check in momentarily for Michigan State. Crawford heads this one up in the air. Clog it. We'll send it back to the Spartans. 
Now Drew Brand's going to chase this one down for a throw in. Brandon Cloggett will elect to throw it instead, and this one once again heading down by Tyler Crawford. Trying to weave around Spartan defenders, and this one will be sent out. And Crawford's played really well so far in this match on that far side. He's had a difficult assignment, but he's done a really good job of just containing, not letting anything get by him. And when he needs to then step in and make a play, he's been able to deliver. Get a look at the transfer power. Four leaders and minutes are all transfers. Obviously, we've seen some of those guys today. Get a look at Ethan Dudley, Brandon Cloggett, Andrew Stevens, and Christian Garner. All have made their impacts felt for the Wildcats. We kind of touched on this when we were talking about their head coach, but Northwestern really utilizing the transfer portal to get some of their best players and it's worked out for them especially this year when you can have those players play big minutes for you right throughout the season and transfer portal has really changed college athletics for every sport and when you get a new coach in you're going to get new players as well that's just the way it works yeah and some prefer to bring in their own players and correct kind of have a younger team and then there's some that say you know what no enough of that let's bring in some of these transfer guys and let's try to win right away while right. still developing some of your younger recruits and that seems to be the approach that Northwestern is taking and it's also some of these guys you already know as well like you've coached them before you have good standing relationships and you say hey come play for me at Northwestern or whatever school you're the new coach at and obviously we've seen that many places before and once again Northwestern utilizing that portal Just over 24 minutes remaining in regulation. This one will be sent back over to Gardner and boot it out. This Northwestern defense, I mean, I, I've touched on it throughout this match so far, but they've just been really good, really sound there. Those back four have really played very well and made life very difficult for the Spartans. No scoring has occurred since 13-11, showing on the clock in the first half. Got Nigel Prince gonna push it forward and still looking to find some offensive identity for both teams, but defense has been good as well. Prince is one of those guys for Northwestern that's made plenty of fantastic plays and Michigan State, good opportunity here. Spadafora set up on a tee, but offsides was the call. Yeah, that's just tough right there. It, it probably wouldn't have mattered anyway. The pass was a little bit long, made an easy play there for Garner, but another missed opportunity for Michigan State. So far, the story of the game. You look back at the Stout opportunity and the Perkins opportunities for Michigan State. I mean, they have eight shots, four on goal. It's going to matter when it's all said and done. If this one ends 1-1, one, one, you could have looked back and said, hey, I mean, we had that goal. It was wide open for Perkins, and Crossbar was the defender on that. And, I mean, it, it's not just that one, but anytime you have a shot on goal and you get a look as good as some of the ones Michigan State's been getting. You expect those to go in. You expect those to be in the back of the net. A lot of credit has to go to the keeper, Christian Gardner. He's been fantastic today for Northwestern, but sometimes it's just you got to find a way to put those in the back of the net, and it could cost him today. Kimmy V trying to cross it in. Now Andrew Stevens will get it stolen away. Michigan State is about a four with it. We'll tap it. Near side, just keeping it in nicely there is Gugamis. This one will be headed down by Jack Beck. Back over to Gugamis and was looking for Spada 4, but got stolen right there by Dudley. And this one will be rolled over to Finnerty, who will toss it to Nick Stone. 
Spadafora, good opportunity here. Trying to work against Dudley. Cross it in, but Nigel Prince says, get it out of here with that, and we'll send it out. This will be a corner opportunity. It appears Luis Sala will go attempt. And it hasn't just been the shots for Michigan State, but if you look at the discrepancy here in corner kicks, this is going to be the sixth Spartan corner, and Northwestern's only had one. So you're talking about those opportunities that Michigan State has continually gotten throughout the match, and they just haven't been able to take advantage of them to this point. See if they can do something different here. Try to get someone loose for an open shot. This one crossed in. Was looking for the deflection and Garner, another diving stop right there, would have missed the goal either way. Just an update looking around the league. Still Indiana still up 1-0 over Maryland and still tied in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and Penn State. I mean, right now if those results hold, the you know result of this game really does not matter for these two sides. They would be basically exactly right where they are now. Northwestern would be on the outside looking in. And Michigan State would just miss out on that, that first round home game. Especially with attendance here, home field is everything. You want to have these this crowd you saw against Michigan when they were able to really take over and that momentum that Michigan State got in that match was was massive because of that home field advantage. Yeah, and like we said, they're at the, kind of the top of the Big Ten in terms of attendance this season. It definitely is an advantage here at DeMartin for Michigan State to play at home. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm sure they would love to do everything that they can to get that home field. But not only do they have to get a win in this game, but they don't control their own destiny. They're going to need outside help, and right now they're not getting that. Now Salah with it. Over to Spadafora, Michigan State trying to come the other way. Clog it in pursuit though, good defense to slow down the Spartan attack. Now back over Stone. Trying to work inside and back to Stone. and That one will be slid out there. And another corner opportunity for Michigan State with 19 minutes remaining in the second half. Yeah, another corner opportunity, and I just touched on this now, seven to one in favor of Michigan State in terms of corner kicks. And let's see if they can get one right around that penalty spot. That's where you want it on these corner kicks. That's where you have a lot of your players kind of sitting at. They're going to run in, try to get any sort of body part on it. Crawford sends it in. This one headed up in the air. And this one left out. Salo trying to deflect it in. Howe was close to that one. Back still with it, send it off in Andrew Prince's head. Now Sala being double teamed at the moment in the corner. Try to get over to Howe and that one will be sent back out there by Ding Ding Kerr. Northwestern just did a really good job of messing up the middle, making it difficult to s for Michigan State really to see the net and have a clean look at it. Another opportunity there that just Nothing. Yeah, so Michigan State gonna have to step back in defense once again. Clog it. Hot in pursuit and now slowed down by Northwestern. Here's Prince with it. Back to the center circle for Ron Brown. It's Kerr. Now far side. Once again, Michigan State trying to be stout on defense as they get it back here over to Nick Stone. Trying to get out of the attacking third for Northwestern. Some urgency starting to pick up for Michigan State. Both teams, you know, know the situation, and I mean, both teams know that. A a tie does nothing. Right. It, it's not going to help them either way, and they both have an opportunity to win this game. And so, you really got to turn on that intensity, find your second win, turn on that switch to be able to push yourself to the finish. And one goal, one more goal, may win it with how this game's gone. Indeed, it might. There's Jack back with it. Send it over for Crawford, and him and Cloggett will collide. Cloggett ends up with it. Now we'll look for. 
Thaggard, but Elijah Howe was all over that one. Fernity will send it back towards Salah's way. Headed down by Nigel Prince. And heading in a lot of pain as clock will stop and appears it was a head collision there and Jack Beck pleading his case. Rolling around in pain it appears as Jason Gadahara. Get another look at it right here. It just yeah, it, a little whiplash, yeah. Yeah, it just looked like Beck kind of extended his arms just a little bit there on that push. And, again, that's going to be a call every time, especially with just kind of how Gajadahar hit the turf. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, it looks like he's going to be okay, helped off by the trainer. Now for Northwestern, this is an opportunity. It's basically a very long corner with where they're taking it. Basically from, it's lined up to where you would be taking a corner, but it's just a lot farther back. So here we go, good opportunity here for Northwestern. Sent in by McCarran. Tapped down by Finnerty and just running into the keeper there was the Wildcats. Yeah, a little over pursuing there from Northwestern. Knocks the keeper down and now Michigan State will have a chance to counter before Northwestern could get reset. Here's Salo back to back and here's Gugamis. Crawford taking his time. Give it back to Sala and Crawford taps it over towards the middle to Zuge. Michigan State still trying to find something offensively as Sala elects to let that one slide past. Beck doing a nice job to show off his flexibility and knock that one down. This one sent back by Michigan State that's Adam and collision right there between Prince and Spadafora. Northwestern is really starting to turn up the urgency. You can see it. They're starting to play faster, a little bit more physical, doing everything they can to get that goal. They know that they need it. If they want any chance of going to the Big Ten tournament. Now towards the middle, that's Abram. Beck. Trying to get something going for Michigan State. Looking for Spadafora. And he's off sides. Second time in the last few minutes that Spadafora has been caught off sides. Nice job by Northwestern. Setting the hard line. Making it difficult to get past it. And if you do, you're off sides. So, again, Northwestern's defensive line. They deserve a lot of credit for how they've played today. They're the reason that Northwestern's still in this game. Salo will... Tap it back to Spadafora. Trying to get it to Gugamis, but Northwestern all over it. 14 minutes remaining. So plenty of time. Both teams are going to really have to start thinking ahead here. Obviously a little bit scoreboard watching going on, but either side wants to get their side of the bargain done by winning. Yeah, I mean, exactly. If they are scoreboard watching, you obviously, none of the results matter unless you get a result right here. Right. And so that's where the focus needs to be. And, and Northwestern definitely getting a little bit more animated. They're, they're coming to life here. With a nice opportunity here. Identical kick from the opposite side. Mm -hmm. So McCammy in front of his own bench. And sent high, and Prince popped in the air. Sala will punch it back out. Prince and Howe as Howe will head it up. Beck will let it drop. 
Prince lost his footing for a second, and Crawford gets back from Michigan State. Now pushing ahead, looking for Spadafora. Cloggett will win the chase, though, and tip it back to Gardner. This one back in front of the Michigan State bench, 12.30 remaining. Stone looking for Gugamis, but that one will head out. Just another bad touch there from Michigan State. Not a lot of room to make that pass down the sideline, to be fair, but just they haven't been able to connect on those passes out wide that we know that they love to connect with. And then from outside, they're going to try to bring the ball in to start their attack, but they just haven't been able to connect on those passes, and it's really set them back. Mm -hmm. That one will go off of Abram and then deflect once again off Northwestern. That was Joseph Arena. A lot of action happening in midfield. Either side looking for that goal to send them ahead. The scoring has not happened since 13-11 into the first half. Again, as I said, it just feels like one goal is going to be able to do it. Next goal may be able to win the game. The only question is, are we going to see that goal? This one tipped up in the air, and almost a really good opportunity. Slapping his hands together was Dang Dang Kerr. And Michigan State now will try to work quickly the other way. This one will be too far for Grayson Mercer, though. Infinity not happy with his team. And what a touch there by Kerr to just even get a foot on it. Just skipped across the goal line. Harmless, but... Nice opportunity there for Northwestern. They're going to need more of that. Gajadahar will come back in after leaving briefly because of an injury. This one will be over to Perkins. McCammy on defense. Perkins loses his footing and loses the ball in the process. Now ahead, Elijah Howe and Owen Infinity will race up and get it back. Now to Tyler Crawford. This one towards the middle, Stout with it. Trying to get it back with Nigel Prince. Able to control it. Kachahara back towards the middle once again. Stolen back by Michigan State. Stout going to tap it towards... His teammate, and now here's Perkins with it. Far side, under 10 minutes remaining in this one. Perkins trying to work some magic out in front in this one. Dang Dang Kerr was able to boot it away. This one, good opportunity here for the Wildcats. Cruising up is Alex Gordon, and... A collision, and we have a stoppage right here. Stone cannot believe it as the X goes up from the official. Owen Finnerty also in disbelief. Elijah Howe trying to plead his case, but looks like a penalty kick might be coming up. Very delayed call there happened after the tackle as we're going to get another look at it right here. Mm. And I think Stone may have a case there. I don't know if he made contact yeah, with Dudley at all. Perkins and also trying to plead his case for Michigan State. and That just seems to be the argument of I, I don't think Stone touched Dudley necessarily on that play. To get another look at it. We see Stone kind of come into the frame. I, it just, it, it just looks, looks like, like he's already, already going falling. down. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And so what? Nonetheless, there's going to be no talking out of this one. It's it's going to be left now to Owen Finnerty to save the Spartans right now. Owen Finnerty, Ethan Dudley, season on the line for the graduate senior. 6'4", 200 from St. John's, Florida. Ready for a huge kick. Coming up momentarily. Here we go, Dudley gets the goal. It's 2-1 Northwestern. 
Wildcats go up late in this one. Confident penalty right there from Dudley. He knew exactly where he was going with it, buries it right in the bottom right corner. Finnerty wouldn't have had a chance even if he guessed right. Heartbreaker in East Lansing. Spartans still can't believe the call that led to it, but Finnerty wasn't able to guess right, and Ethan Dudley seals the deal right there. Talked about him at the top of the broadcast. The leading scorer for this Northwestern team. He's been tremendous all year, and he delivers in Northwestern's biggest moment of the year, potentially, as now they're in the driver's seat, and they're a Michigan loss away from potentially sealing their place in the Big Ten tournament. And what makes Northwestern's situation even better, Penn State has taken a 3-2 lead now. So the Wildcats, can they do it once again? Did it last year. Were able to take down Michigan State. Sticking to the Big Ten tournament and trying to do it again. Last time these two teams played at DeMart, Michigan State came away with a 2-0 victory, but then, yeah, as we've mentioned, last year Northwestern got the better of them and it kind of set the stage for an early exit for Michigan State in the Big Ten tournament. Dully was able to head that one out for Northwestern and Gardner will go down, wait for his defense and to retreat. And now I'm sure that Northwestern, someone on that Northwestern bench has to be trying to pull up the scores right now. Oh, yeah. Of course, their team has to finish the job, but they want to know exactly what's going on right now in Ann Arbor. So 2-1, Michigan State. Got a long way to work back if you're going to get home field advantage. Spartans are frustrated with the officiating right now. As the official will stop the clock, go talk to Stone, and Perkins and the official will talk as well. Yeah, they're going to have to go quickly here. I mean, they, they can kind of feel it slipping away, but again, you can't get, you can't win until you get the equalizer, and they have a lot of time still to do that. Eight minutes is plenty of time to get two goals. They just have to be sound in their passing and in their combinations and find a way to create opportunities. Big play there by Crawford. Now to the corner, Grayson Mercer gets it stolen back. As we have a substitution for Michigan State. Stone will come out. In comes Luis Sala. Crawford will get ready to throw in. You got 720 left to work with if you're Michigan State. Spartans have really struggled in those final five games. You have to look back all the way to 2016. Last time a Spartan team was able to get win three of their last five. This would be the third win if they were able to take this one. But at the moment, they are still down. Yeah, and if you, I mean, if you're Michigan State, you, you never want to lose, especially not on senior day in what could be potentially your senior's last you know, game at DeMartin. But for them, at least, it's not the same situation where they know they're going to the Big Ten tournament. They're going to have an opportunity to play their way into the NCAA tournament. But that game at home would have been nice. And it's still possible, but they're just going to have a lot of work to do to get there. And there's under 10 minutes remaining for Indiana as well as they still lead 1-0 over Maryland. So either way, not really helping Michigan State case, but... Penn State leading with not a lot of time left in Ann Arbor, three to two. Michigan State's gonna get a goal kick here. Have to find a way to work fast and even you know, salvaging a draw here would have to leave Michigan State feeling pretty good heading into next week. Paul's son will come in for Alex Gordon. So under six minutes remaining. Elijah Howitt that Spartans need a goal bad. Got to work with some urgency right here. Mercer with it. Back across. There's Luis Sala. Work far side, trying to get over to Perkins and does. Perkins nearly losing his footing again. Work it over to Beck. Beck winding up and 
right into Garner's chest right there for another save as Michigan State, you look again at that Will Perkins shot. Would have been tied right now. Yeah, I mean, again, you don't want to assume, it's like assuming the double play in baseball, you don't want to assume that everything that has happened up to this point would have still happened had that shot gone in, but, I mean, you're right, Owen, it, it makes you wonder of just if that shot had gone literally like two feet more yeah. into inches, the net. honestly inches. It's It was that yeah, close. Inches, yeah, it just, you know, the whole ball's got across that goal line and it didn't. And, I mean, yeah, it's a what-if situation, but I think Michigan State's still played pretty well today. They've left some opportunities on the table, not just the Perkins shot, but multiple others as well. And, you know, they've had some good momentum. It's just kind of an unlucky break there with the penalty kick. Stout was looking for another opportunity to counter George, and that one was sent back out. So now with 4.30, if you're a Michigan State senior, and this is going to be your last game, it appears to be at DeMartin Field, unless the tide turns quickly. How? What are Connor George? Prince playing defense, and nice work there. Going to tap it over to Joseph Arena. In pursuit here is Jason Gajahara. So throw in for Crawford, under four minutes. Spartans got to find something right now. It's got to be quick. Again, you can't win unless you get the first one. They got to find that equalizer here probably in the next minute and a half if they want any chance of potentially winning this game. So near side, there's Tyler Crawford. A wind up trying to cross this one in. Prince is all over it, though. Back out to Elijah Howe, 3.30, remaining in this one. Adam at midfield, Luis Sala from the Spartan bench. Trying to get the deflection of Stout and Garner was all over it. So he's gonna slow things down, everyone will back up. He's gonna really t milk this one. What a job, though, by Christian Garner this entire match. I mean, there's a multiple saves where he had to sprawl out and make diving attempts to bat it away. And credit to the goalkeeper. Yeah, they're not in this game. They're not even in a position to win this game without Christian Garner in that he's been outstanding. Infinity's been, you know, very rock solid as well for Michigan State. Again, it was just a bit of an unlucky break there on that penalty kick. And... He guessed wrong and wasn't able to make the save. Clock will stop. We have a substitution coming in. Coming in is Gianni Fury. So possibly his final minutes here. As Fury checks in for Michigan State at home. Sala with it now. And work it forward. Stout. And send it over his head to Crawford. Crawford to back over to Jonathan Stout. He has the long goal for Michigan State. And just too high. Was looking for Mercer and Will Perkins. And once again, passing has not been the sharpest in the second half for Michigan State. So under two minutes. Clock will stop as Russell Payne wants to know why. I mean, yeah, obviously, if you're Russell Payne, you don't want the clock stopping right now. You're a minute 40 from having an opportunity to get your team into the Big Ten tournament. You look at Michigan State, and 11 different Spartans have helped this, this team score, and obviously today it's just been Jonathan Stout. Still looking for someone else. I really don't think that they would care who it is if someone could get the equalizer Correct. right now. This one will go out, so Michigan State will get it back. 93 seconds remaining. Spartans got to work quick. Pushing the other way, Johnny Fury. Going to tap it over to Jonathan Stout. Michigan State needs to put it all on the line right here. Connor George going to cross it over, kicked away by Kerr. Bad down by Sala. Minute 10. 
Here's Ferry. Going to get it to Perkins. Perkins. Tap it over to Jack Beck. Going to go near corner to Crawford. Going to wind up, cross it in, look for a deflection. Goes out. And Elijah Howe said it went off a wildcat. Did not, though. And now you got... Gardner with it, who will milk this thing down, and it appears Michigan State will once again fall. Three-game losing streak now for the Michigan State Spartans after a couple of tough losses to both Maryland and Ohio State. And now 2-1. to one. Probably going to be the final score today with 20 seconds remaining. As this one rolls around, Gardner will just pounce on it, and Michigan State, they will fall to 7 8 and 2, and Northwestern will pick up that critical win. Now, finally have a conference win on the season. They improved to 3 8 and 5 overall, but Northwestern gets their part of the deal done. Penn State still leads 3 to 2 with under four minutes remaining in Ann Arbor. Any final thoughts, Michael? Yeah, for Michigan State, it's 